Okay, so I'm in the same district. I'm in a rural district in New York State. Um, it's 49.7% poverty. This is a child that the teacher here is sharing with me. We know that his, that basically his academic support is only available for him in school. He yes. does not live in a situation where he is able to really work at home with parents, which would be ideal. So we're working with this child. He came into, you shared with me, how, what did he come into second grade with? He had limited skills. He only knew 13 facts when he started second grade. He's in the 49.7% 40, poverty. He's one of those kids, and he scored a 90 on this exam. Which, as you can see, it's the, the orange there by her. So let's talk about this child. Let's look at some of these problem solving that you shared with, you guys have shared with me. So here's, this, here's Jack with this with pencils, both big and small. And you can see here that this child is able to draw the bar model appropriately and write the sentence, and apparently he did this independently. Yes, he did. And this, I want to share with you that this is the end of March, just before our spring break this year. So this is the end of March of second grade for a child who came in with only 13 facts from first grade. And, uh, and yeah. no support at home. And no support at home, yep. And we can see here, this was a particularly difficult problem because this is one of the ones that um, these teachers, I'm happy to say, have worked with both myself and colleagues for the last couple years. And we talk about, I gave 108 pencils to my sister. Now I have 256 pencils. So this is a problem where the beginning is unknown. We've talked about that. So you could deal with it as a missing add end, which is what this child, um, well, no, actually a missing, uh, the piece is missing. The total yeah, the is whole, missing. Mm -hmm. The yep. beginning, the total, the whole. So you're looking at a situation where you could set it up that way, or you could accidentally go by the language and just subtract right away. So he obviously knew Although his bar model is squished, <laughs> he drew it on his own. Mm -hmm. Correctly. Yep. This is what attention to these kinds of details can bring out in our children. I am so impressed by this. Okay. Oh, and he lost one for not for punctuation here. No, because he wrote the wrong answer sentence. He wrote. Oh, interesting. To his sister, and really, it was how many he had to start with. He just wrote the wrong answer sentence. But I like that there was the detail there. So this question was worth three points. Mm -hmm. Yes. Three points. Okay. And, and what else did, because this is a really very, very genuinely interesting case. And here's the kid, he got full credit for this. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Because here we're looking again, a second grader. So we're building to multiplication here. This is the repeated, uh, repeated adding of the same group. So we have Marco and piling his jelly beans. And notice he even understands to extend the table for a future question. He can describe, we were counting... Five. By, okay, fives. If he continues the pattern, which pile will have, and you can see, um, pile seven will be 35, and we can go up here and see where he did do that. And then we go down here and explain how you got your answer. And this is probably the most powerful thing, is mm -hmm. the fact that this young man can do this. We had 25, and we added two, two more, more piles. piles, yep, and we got 35 second grade folks. Mm -hmm. So this is very possible. These are the kind of kids, this is what we're talking about when we talk about Common Core. So now we'll go here and Kate is going to plant her flowers and look at the work, look at the perseverance of this young man. Look at the perseverance here. From poverty. From poverty, yes. we. Were, I mean, because poverty is definitely, it's a Huge. challenge. It's one of the things we can't fix. And as I can share with you, this is a rural poverty situation, but talking to you today. I'm going to probably use this in several different professional developments, and I work with urban poverty as well in many cases. Um, and, and, you know, even in suburban districts, there are cases of neglect, if you will, or children who really don't go home to anyone but yet may live in a suburban. So there's, there's these kinds of issues, and teaching perseverance is so critical. And when they succeed, look how, look what they can do. Mm -hmm. So here's Kate who planted flowers in her garden, um, and this is, this is multiply. We're going to add how many she did on Monday, and then she did some more on Tuesday. And notice, notice all the information here. Notice all the information here. There's different flowers. So there's really a lot of information to think about. So first, how many roses? So I'm only interested in the roses. And so you can see here that this young man, and jump in any time, mm -hmm. teachers. Um, and these teachers are very, very proud of their students, but obviously at this point, um, are, are very generously sharing of their voices and not their names, and that's just fine. But believe me, they are real teachers in a real district. 
Um, we've got, yeah, this is not made up. You can't make up this. Look at this. Look no. at this adorable child. You can't make this up. But he did the box model beautifully. Box model, listen to me. Box. I'm thinking box plots in sixth grade. How funny is that? Okay, so he did bar. the bar model beautifully. And here we have Cat instead of Kate, but that's okay. So Kate planted and 34 roses we got. So not only can we show it in the bar model, we can show it in the algorithm, the standard format, and write the sentence. Then we go down here, and again, you can tell this is the child writing it independently. That's another thing that's just beautiful about this. And then here we talk about the different daisies. So he had to go back up to the problem and look, yes, that's what he did, what she did on Tuesday. You can see it up there. But now we're going back down here and we're talking about daisies. So now we've got 25 and 25. So this child knows that that goes to 50. He can show it here. This is just beautiful. So she made 50 daisies. <laughs> she made them. Didn't plan them, made them. But that's okay. <laughs> but then, how many flowers? And notice what I love about this question. And this is where... The professional development, certainly, I believe these two young ladies mm -hmm. that are the teachers would have thought of it, but it's certainly language that we have worked on in the last couple years. Rather than, you know, Aww. how much do we say that? Yeah. We always want to say, how all many together. flowers are there in the garden altogether? How many flowers are there in all? all? In all. Mm -hmm. How yeah. often do we want to say that? But here we can see, and again, keeping in mind who this child is. This is the child that we don't necessarily believe exists. He exists. How many roses, how many flowers, not even roses and daisies. So we have to know that roses and daisies are flowers. flowers. Yeah. So how many flowers are in the garden? So this approach is literacy skills as well as math. He has to use the results. So here's your multi-step problem. Mm -hmm. Use the results from the previous questions to come up with this total. Not only can this child describe it with a bar model and show the, show the traditional um, algorithm here, but look at this. She has... 84 plants in all. This child recognizes not only are they flowers, they're plants. Mm -hmm. So the literacy here is phenomenal. I'm and going to share. Right, instead of going back, a lot of kids traditionally would have gone back up here and just done 18, mm -hmm. 16 plus 18 mm -hmm. plus 25 plus 25, and then wouldn't be able to do anything with it. Now I've noticed so many kids are recognizing, oh, I don't need to go back up here. I know what this total is. I know what yep. that total is. Yep. And I saw hardly any kids going back to do that. You right, doing the four numbers. Yes. Yeah. But last year? They all did. Yep. Yeah, they all did. But I want to share with folks listening to this video now, whether whether you're listening to it because you love my web page or you're listening to it because you're in a development with me, that these two ladies have been working on Common Core for two years. So this is their second year. So don't be intimidated by this, but see what's possible. They're working with second grade math. This is their second year in, and these are the results they're seeing. So what they're sharing with you now are the reflections of what they saw last year when it was their first year working with the Common Core and this year their second year. So mm -hmm. is there anything else you wanted to add to that? Because that was really lovely. Well, there's just been tons of growth because now our first graders are coming with more. So we, we see that they're coming with more so we can take them further. And they're doing even more this year in first grade. So we're looking forward to next year. That's awesome. Share a little bit of a reflection on this one and then I will conclude this piece. Uh, not this, not the piles, but the piles, or actually, if we go back again, so I'm going to go back again to the pencil question, because this, this to me is just such a high-level question, and I love that the child is held accountable for answering the question appropriately, as well as the mathematics, which is phenomenal, really, really, really good, because you're holding them all to a high standard, and my point behind that is that children will reach the standard we set. Maybe not all of them, but many will, and we have to give them the opportunity to do that. We have to not very quickly lower our standard rather than expect them to reach it. And this is an example of that. And these ladies are not, they're the kindest teachers probably I've met ever. They rank right up there, and they are not mean, nasty people or anything like that. So <laughs> they're laughing, they're laughing, but it's true, it's true, they're very kind, but yet the expectation is high. You don't have to be stringent to have high expectations, and you can have this happen. Again, we've described the child several times on the, on the video so far. So share some reflections like what your kids, what growth you've seen in this kind of question from last year to this year. We, we actually had to change this test because when we looked at it, before we sent it to be copied, we realized it was too easy for them. So we actually changed, these were all double digit questions and we actually went in and changed some of them to make them 
triple on, in the problem solving and in the straight computation because we knew it, otherwise we'd have a whole lot of hundreds oops, hundreds on <laughs> yeah so that that's one of the questions we actually kicked up okay to make it three digit mm -hmm. but now my question is I'm looking at this from a problem solving point of view as well as the three digit yeah. aspect of right. it so yes the three digit certainly we does have crank been it able up to give this question have. last no. year no they wouldn't have had they would have subtracted basic understanding right. of that part part whole what of well, the language we're itself for. the language and, itself and just the idea of <clears throat> we were asking how many did she begin with instead of the traditional right. old we were scared problems. to put that question in um, we, i mean it's my sister had you know a certain amount of pencil she gave away some how many does she have left that's the old traditional kind of question that you would have asked and so this i was nervous to even give that yeah we were and, and very few of them got it, got it wrong. Yeah, I've been looking through many, and I just chose to highlight this particular child because of his background. Mm -hmm. But yes, very few I can share with you. I, I have a couple of stills that if this is a professional development, you'll see the still photos of this particular problem because I'm very impressed with the way it's worded. I do also want to say at this point that these children are read too. So they follow yes. along as they yeah. read the question and yes. then they do the work. Mm -hmm. Because that's important to know because at this point we are, and many of them will follow it, I'm sure, and, mm -hmm. and, and know some of these words and so forth. Because we are getting them to reading independence, yeah. but that's a different skill. And most so. kids can read it, but because of the diversity in the classroom, especially you do have those low kids, so we will read it. And we want to make sure we're testing math. And not their and reading not their at reading. this point. But comprehension is certainly included yes. because oh, I can yeah. see here oh, yes. that and they we have can to tell. be able to understand it in order to solve the problem. So whether we read it or not, if they don't have that understanding of. And something we've been very conscious of this year, mostly working with you, is making sure that we word the questions differently and change up what's missing, missing at end, missing, um, missing some, missing different. So we want to make sure that we're mixing it up so they're not afraid when they see a question that's mm -hmm. out of. Exactly. the it's standard not, yeah. way. Yeah. And I think it's important to say also here that you've designed this question so that you read it as it is. You don't paraphrase it. No. Oh, no. no. When you're, and Just I want like to make that. it that point. Yep. Um, and then the child, obviously, in this case, you can clearly see the child generates and writes the sentence themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's independent. Mm -hmm. And every child does that. Well, thank you, ladies, very much. I truly appreciate that. Um, this is phenomenal. I do want to, mm, okay, I don't want to end the video though. Isn't that funny? I wanted to put my, my information right here. Oh, you know what? I'll do this. I will share my information on this little whiteboard where we were having a discussion because this was just a unique kind of, um, this is who I am. And actually, I'm going to ask you, are you a good videographer? I'm going to ask you to hold that and, and while I write because I'm having a very difficult time writing and looking <laughs> at this. But this is who I am. Um, this is how to reach me. And obviously you'll know this depending on how you get this. But because I intend to put this out where people can get this kind of development or find more about it, um, I'm going to share both emails because as many of us know, is that wide enough? Is the screen catching mm -hmm. it all? Okay. You can tell this is last minute, or, or not last minute, but kind of uh, spontaneous, because sometimes the best things happen that way. Um, this is who I am. I'm a senior math specialist. Questar, three BOCES, is a New York BOCES. You can certainly contact me and find out about that. Um, I'm also, my Facebook page is from Counting Cows to Calculus. And I also have a Pinterest I also have a Pinterest board under that name if you are into Pinterest. And you can follow me and get more information about me um, on Twitter. I'm not as good at Twitter. I'm working on that. But it's all a learning process. And anyway, I appreciate it, ladies. Thank you very much. I'm working here with um, three uh, very talented second grade teachers in a rural district in New York with a high, significant poverty and really a high dedication to Common Core, and I am very, very happy to share some of their insights and reflections and what our, our students are capable of. Thank you.